The purpose of this video is to demonstrate a very basic workflow for creating horizontal and vertical geometry and defining a corridor and template drops using En-ROADS SS3 Open Roads technology. To begin, I would like to point out that I'm in a 2D design file. The first thing that I want to do is to attach an existing terrain model to use as the backdrop for my design. I already have one created, so I'll just simply go into my reference files and attach the existing terrain model. If I highlight the boundary and select properties on the context toolbar, you can see that I have this terrain model with the name original and a feature definition of existing triangles. The next step is to create horizontal geometry and I'll do that using the horizontal geometry commands in the task menu. I'm going to select the command complex by PI I'll define a radius here of 150. I'm going to select the Geom centerline feature definition and I will give this feature a name. I can now simply select my points and my radiuses are automatically placed. Right click to dismiss the command. Now from this horizontal geometry I'm going to cut a profile and then I'm going to create a vertical alignment as well. Now before creating the profile it's very important that you remember to go in and set your terrain model as active. You can then cut the profile and you'll do that by selecting the horizontal alignment, hovering over it to bring up the context toolbar, and selecting the command open profile model. You're now asked to select or open view, so I'm going to place this in view 2 and I'll data click. And now you can see that in view 2 we have displayed the original ground profile along that horizontal alignment. It's very simple now to create some vertical geometry. We'll do that again in the task menu in the vertical geometry section. I'm going to use the command profile line between points. I'm going to give this feature a name. and select an element template. I'm just going to make this one very simple and draw a straight line from beginning to end. Before exiting this profile view, in order to create your corridor, Again, it's very important to remember to select your profile, hover over it, and set that to active. Okay, we can now go back into our plan view and attach our corridor. I'm going to select this first icon, which is the Create Corridor icon. I'm going to give this corridor a name. Highway 431 is fine. I'm going to go ahead and set the design stage as final. We're prompted to locate the corridor baseline. We're then asked to locate the profile or reset for active profile. Since we want to use the active profile, I'll just right click to reset. Going to data click to accept the corridor name. Now that the corridor has been created, we can create the template drop. 
and we just want this one to go, let's just take this corridor from the start to somewhere up here in the middle. So we're going to lock to the start, but then we're going to, going to select the ending. So we're asked here to identify the template that we want to use. Let's change that. To change that, I'll hold down the Alt key and click the down arrow. And that brings up our pick template dialog. So I'm just going to select a two lane rural and click OK. I'll data click to select that. We're locked into our start, so we'll just select that. And then we can move along the alignment here to select our ending. Now we select our template drop interval. I'm going to change that to 25 feet and data click. We're not going to have any transitions before or after the drop, so we'll just leave those as zero. Now you can see that the corridor has been created. And if we highlight and select one of our corridor handles, we can view the properties. And you can see here that the corridor's name is Highway 431. It's made up of the horizontal geometry center line. The vertical geometry is baseline profile and we have selected the design stage of final. If we also highlight our corridor and select corridor creation tools, corridor objects, from here you can see many of the commands and options that you're accustomed to in Select Series 2, such as secondary alignments, key stations, parametric constraints, point controls, etc.